If you're an entrepreneur, getting into a top accelerator is easily one of the most important things you could ever do for your startup. And on the surface, getting in seems pretty simple. Apply, you give your pitch, they look at the best startups, and then they choose the best one, and the best one gets in. But having put my startup through two of the top accelerators, and also been on the judging panel for those accelerators to see how startups actually get in, I can tell you there's a lot going on behind the scenes that you are probably not privy to. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to play the game and basically guarantee your acceptance into top accelerators. If you're new here, my name is Micaiah. I'm a serial entrepreneur. My last startup, Prodigy, raised $21 million from top VCs. We ultimately sold it to a public company. And now I make videos like this to help entrepreneurs just like you. Let's get into it. So the first tip is actually to use your network and try to get warm intros into accelerators. In a fair world, in a fair process, networking and warm intros would not matter. But wake up call, this is earth and things aren't always fair. And so trying to get a warm intro into either one of the partners of the accelerator or the founder of the accelerator or someone high up in the accelerator can really make a difference. And this is a massive unfair advantage when applying for an accelerator. Now, if you don't know anyone in the accelerator and you don't really know how to get an intro or things like that, that's fine. Reach out to people that work at the accelerator and say, hey, I'm thinking about applying, thinking about joining. Do you have any tips for me? You can also reach out to previous batch mates and say the same thing. I'm thinking about applying. Do you have any tips for me on how to get in? Oftentimes, just having a conversation with these people will open doors that were otherwise closed for you. My second tip, and this is something I see so many founders screw up, it's honestly just so frustrating, is to practice your pitch. I can't tell you the number of times I have watched an entrepreneur go through their pitch for what may be one of the most important meetings of their life, and they run out of time when they're only halfway through. It's clear that they have not practiced. Now, when I say practice, what often happens and what I've seen entrepreneurs do is they say, oh, I'll go practice it five, 10 times. That's weak sauce. When I was trying to get into accelerators, I practiced my pitch over a hundred times and I did it on camera. Now you don't need a fancy camera setup like I have here filming all of this. Just set up your phone, put it on your table, on your desk or whatever, film yourself giving your pitch. It's super important to watch. Are you emphasizing the right points? Are you pacing through your pitch correctly? Do you have the slides memorized so that you can go through without checking your notes or looking back? These sort of small differences are what separate the really honestly average to good founders from the great founders. And accelerators are only looking for great founders. So practice your pitch, I would say a minimum of 100 times on camera, review the footage every time, see what you can improve, and you will be way ahead of other founders. Another way to really increase your odds is do post-application back channels. Now what I mean by this is after you apply for an accelerator, try to get as many people sending emails to people that work at the accelerator and will see your application as possible. And they're saying nice things about you, of course. Now, again, your network comes into play here. If you have people that work at the accelerator or know people that work at the accelerator, that's a slam dunk. That's obvious. But even if you don't, again, reach out to former batch mates or other people that have been through the accelerator, get them to sort of put in a good word with you. And it doesn't have to be the best good word. Obviously, if these people don't know you well, they're not going to vouch their life for you. But they might say something like, hey, I heard someone who's applying for the accelerator. We got coffee last week. He gave me a rundown of what he's doing. Sounds like a cool idea. I think he'd be a good fit. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. And just that little note will give you a massive advantage compared to other founders because it shows that you're putting in the work, that you're hustling. And ultimately what they wanna see is people that will get the job done no matter what. So demonstrating that while you're applying to the accelerator makes a big difference. Now, of course, when you're applying to accelerators, you probably have your top pick, the accelerator that you would take over any other accelerator. But what I really strongly recommend is running a parallel process where you're applying to multiple accelerators at once. This is for a couple of reasons. First, maybe obviously, if your top pick doesn't let you in, you need backup options. That way you can still get your startup funded, get connections from the accelerator, and ultimately have a successful demo day. So I wouldn't just apply to one accelerator and say, this is it. However, the other sneaky benefit about this is the accelerator world, the VC world, all the sort of like startup ecosystems tend to be very small. And so what you'll find is that if you're applying to multiple accelerators, often one accelerator will hear that you're applying to other accelerators. 
and this won't make them like you less, they will like you more. Because if they were sort of on the fence, there's sort of this feeling of, you don't wanna be the one that got away. You don't wanna be the next Facebook that applied to two its elevators and one said no, and then they let the other one let them in. So as you're going through this process, it's really helpful to sort of create some FOMO around your company, around your process by running a parallel process and applying to multiple its elevators. It also just helps you get more practice in. If you're applying to multiple its elevators, you'll hear the same questions sort of multiple times, and you'll just get better at your pitch as you go through it. Another thing startup its elevators always look for when they're choosing whether or not to accept a certain company into the batch is customer validation. Now, by customer validation, I simply mean that customers have validated that what you're building, they will actually buy. Now, the easy way to do this is if you have customers that are already paying you, you have customer validation, I would say let's take it to the next level and get those customers to give testimonials that they love your product, that they would never cancel, and that they can't live without you. Now, you might be surprised. I have had customers who on one day will call me screaming, cursing me out and saying they hate my product, they wanna cancel, still give me customer testimonials. Here's why. The way I frame it is simple. I say, listen, we're applying to this elevator. It would mean a lot to us if we get in. And let me tell you what it means for you. If we get in, we will have more funding, therefore more resources. We can fix the problems you're experiencing and hire a bigger team to support you. So if you'd be open to helping us out, I'd really appreciate a good word. And I'm telling you, the same customers that will swear at me and tell me they hate me will give me raving reviews for this process. I've seen it happen so many times. You would be surprised what people will do for you. Yes, they may be frustrated when you're product interferes with their business, but ultimately people are people and people wanna help each other. So don't be afraid to ask. Now, if you don't have customers, you don't have a product, you're not in market, you can still get customer validation. And here's how. First, get LOIs. LOI stands for letter of intent. It's a non-binding contract that just says the customer is genuinely interested in what you're building. So you whip up a basic LOI and the structure kind of goes something like this. If company, i.e. your startup, succeeds in building the following requirements, then this customer is interested in buying the product. Now, again, it's non-binding. It's not a huge commitment for them to sign these LOIs, but it really moves the needle forward in terms of have you received customer validation? Just showing that you have signed paper from customers goes a really long way. Now to make that even stronger, again, go get quotes. They're not customer testimonials, but you can get quotes from these customers saying something like, you know, we've been working with so-and-so, we love what they're building, we can't wait to put it in our team, it's gonna be a game changer. These sort of quotes can again make a massive difference and will separate you from the average applicant. Another important thing to consider if you're thinking about applying to Accelerator is you need to be full time. Now I understand that's not an option for some people. It is better, and this is just being honest, you can choose to like it or not, but it's the truth. It is better to quit your job and apply for the Accelerator than to tell the Accelerator, hey, if we get in, we will go full time. It's just sort of a mentality of if you've already quit your job, you've burned the bridges. You will do whatever it takes to make this startup successful. But if you're sort of on the fence and you will quit once you get in, then it's not as strong and the accelerators are maybe a little less likely to let you in. But that's okay. If you really need your job for whatever reason, you need the income or you just don't have that sort of life support built, you can still tell the accelerator you will quit your job and go full time when you get in. I would just make this very clear during the process as you're talking to them, they might ask you part-time or full-time. It's important that you demonstrate and very clearly articulate, I will be full-time, my co-founders will be full-time. When we get in this accelerator, this is all we're gonna live, breathe, eat, and think about is making this thing successful. So again, demonstrate that you're willing to go full-time or preferably already be full-time by the time you're applying. One of the other things that really matters for accelerators, and people don't really understand this when they're just starting out, is accelerators think like venture capitalists. Think about it. They're giving you some funding, maybe it's $50,000, $150,000, and they're getting a percentage of your business. The accelerator is not a just like fun side project for these people. This is their full-time job. This is how they make money. So the investments they make into startups need to pay off, and they can't just pay off a little. They need to be massive outcomes. The way accelerators bet this is the same way venture capitalists do. They're gonna be looking for large outcomes, i.e. large markets that can produce multi-billion dollar companies. So if you're going in to pitch an accelerator and and your market is you know, 50 million, $500 million. Let me get this straight. A $500 million business is an amazing business, but in terms of venture outcomes, it's not that great. They don't need a $500 million business. 
They need the next Facebook, a $500 billion business. And so the way to demonstrate that is you need to have a very large market. I would say the bare minimum for a market is $2 billion in attainable revenue for your service. So I don't mean that the total spend in your category is $2 billion. I mean, at the price point today that you are selling your product times the number of customers that would buy your product, the total is greater than $2 billion. This is sort of the bare minimum for VCs and therefore also the bare minimum for accelerators. Now, as you're applying and going through this process, one of the most important concepts you should keep in mind is the concept of being willing to go above and beyond what any reasonable person would do. Let me explain. What I mean by this is a reasonable person will apply for the accelerator, they will practice their pitch a few times, they'll go in, they'll deliver a pitch, maybe they'll even send a few thank you emails to the people that interviewed them, but that's about it. What I would rather see you do is really go all in. So before you even apply, you're contacting different partners, you're meeting them for coffee, you're sort of building a network within the accelerator. When you apply, maybe you show up with like custom swag for your t-shirt, maybe you give swag to the judges, you have something fun. Again, what's gonna separate you from other founders and then after you apply you're having these back channels come in maybe instead of sending a thank you email to each judge you send a thank you video and again it doesn't have to be fancy like this setup here just something that shows you are willing to go above and beyond salvators are looking for this hustle culture this ability to get things done in an unusual i will make it happen no matter what way and the last tip and one of the most important tips of all is to go in with what i call peak momentum now peak momentum is generated by something that i call momentum manipulation it's one of the most important things you can learn as a founder, so I highly recommend investing the time to learn it. Luckily for you, I just made this video, Momentum Manipulation, The Dirty Secret of Silicon Valley. So click the link, check it out, and I'll see you over there.